Hi everyone, happy 2014 and here's the review of the tags that I've made this year for the 12 tags of 2013 challenge. I've had great fun but I've always been playing catch up. I started a little bit late this year and I actually ended up making this tag last. So this is the first tag that um, Tim made to herald in the new year and 2013 but actually I just managed to get it in on the final day of this year. I just had a quick look at my blog and actually I didn't start uh, playing along with the challenge till May because I did think I probably wouldn't have the time to do it this year and then I kept seeing everybody's tags appearing on their blogs and I knew I was missing out on all the fun so uh, I decided actually I would join in the fun and I would make videos at the same time so this was Tim's uh, January tag and as you can see it's all about time which is quite appropriate for the new year and uh, I've used some of the little elements I, I used the colour scheme which was the ice spruce and rusty hinge I definitely uh, took on board that time theme because I thought it was quite appropriate for the um, time of year so although I completed my tags out of sequence I got there in the end so the next one was February and obviously that had a Valentine's theme and this was Tim's tag and he used the Queen of Hearts, one of his blue print stamps which I didn't have um, but I did have some of the other elements, the Baker's Twine for instance, I had that and uh, I decided to do something a little bit sexy for Valentine's Day and I used some tissue tape for my ribbon at the top and I really like this sort of lace up detail and uh, I've put I think your ace and I did this little pop-up heart on um, a playing card. So we've got March next and I thought this looked a little bit like a shaker card um, and Tim made it using, um, I think he used tinsel to make his sparkly rabbit. It was quite a girly tag I have to say for Mr Holt and uh, I continued that theme. I love these painted flowers and uh, one of my favourite things this year was using distress paints and I've uh, started my collection. I haven't got them all yet but I'm getting there and uh, I decided to make this into a shaker tag as I didn't have the tinsel and it definitely has a spring theme like Tim's and uh, I had a go at cutting my blades of grass. I didn't have the uh, special dye that Tim had but uh, I think this worked and uh, I quite enjoyed putting this one together. So next up we have April and my uh, the back of my tag is a little bit messy and uh, it actually fits in with this photograph that Tim took of his tag and he was showing us how to do a kind of patina effect with paints with the distress paints and the metallics and uh, although mine didn't quite turn out like his I, I do quite like that effect and I definitely love the colours of the copper and the blue and uh, mine took on a bit of a steampunk style and I captured some little shrink plastic bugs under this packaging. I quite like using packaging for sort of shaker cards so I tend to keep hold of some of my more unusual shaped packaging and it worked quite well on this tag. Well I hope you'll agree that it worked quite well on this tag. And next up we have May and actually it was May where I started playing along again and uh, I saw this technique that Tim used uh, for using bits and pieces of rub-ons and they kind of acted as a resist I remember on the inky technique and once you'd put your rub-ons down then you swished your uh, tag through ink and the rub-ons acted as a resist so I got to use some very old rub-ons indeed in this tag but it turned out quite pretty love this purpley and pink colour which is quite an unusual colour scheme for me and uh, I used up some of my roses which I coloured with the inks that I was using on the background. And we have the month of June and this one was a bit more about using your stamps and then using uh, distress markers to colour in your stamps. Well I don't have any distress markers so this was a little bit tricky for me but uh, I did have a gut colouring in my stance but I use my distress inks and that's something that I tend to do just swipe your distress inks onto your craft mat and then pick them up like you would watercolour paint and they work very well uh, but I think I've achieved 
uh, some of the flavour of Tim's tag, even though I didn't have an awful lot of the things that he was using. I think that's one of the best things about this challenge. It doesn't matter what products you've got. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, it's all about having a look, learning some new techniques, and, and then making uh, beautiful things with the, the stash that you do have. And if you treat yourself along the way, well, that's got to be a bonus. And Tim had a very patriotic theme for this tag, and I've gone very British for mine, and uh, definitely a little bit girly in the colours. So instead of the traditional red, white and blue, I've gone for pink and a very light baby blue. And um, I also brayed on the colour, like Tim showed us in the technique for this tag. And it worked quite well. I used masks to create my flag, and I was quite happy with the sort of shabby chic look that I got by brayering the colour onto my tag. And I've stitched on a few pearly buttons just to finish off the look. So I've got a little bit of a tag book here and that was inspired by the fact that Tim showed us more than one tag this month. So in August he was talking and teaching us all about masking and uh, that created a lovely layered look with the stamps he was using. And I tried to do the same kind of thing, but instead of a travel theme, I've got a sewing theme, as you can see here. Definitely a very girly and lacy uh, tag book that I've ended up with. And it was quite good fun trying to get lots of different looks on the tags. And I've just used a pink and blue theme uh, mixed in with some of the browns. And uh, I think I... Um, had a good go at trying masking and then stamping with the coloured stamps in the background. And this one's a little bit trickier to get onto my little tag wardrobe, but uh, it does work and that's one of the things that I like about this uh, storage system is it doesn't matter how bulky your tags get, you can hang them in this space and they just uh, move about so they've got plenty of room. So I've just got to get it through all four of the little tags and that's it. It can join the collection. So the next tag is September and by this point we'd uh, met or me and my friend Deb had met Mr Holtz at his workshop. We'd had a lovely time and uh, this was all about using his brand new uh, tag stencils and using embossing paste to create a resist on your tag background. And I had a go at this, it worked quite well, but I used a bigger uh, stencil, one of the masks that I already had. And uh, the beauty of the new ones is that they're a bit better in scale for working on tags and cards and that. Uh, the little black dots that you can see is the, the, the actual stencil that I got um, when I went to the workshop. So that's the first one of my collection. And I went along with the uh, butterfly theme, that uh, the stamps that Tim had used on his tag. And I quite like how this turned out. I particularly like the uh, new metal stickers that I used as a trim on the bottom of, the, on the bottom of that tag. And if you have been following along, you'll know that October, November, December and January were the last four tags that I had to uh, get in before the end of the year. And this was my October version. Tim did a Halloween tag with lots of distress glitter and uh, I think I've done that on mine. And I had great fun. It was a bit like playing spooky doll's houses, creating this little uh, witch's brew and potions. And uh, I've got two spiders that are very much in love on my tag. So after October we had November and this was a fun technique but I had absolutely nothing that Tim used. I definitely need to do more shopping in 2014. So a gorgeous stamp and a gorgeous technique and uh, this was my version. I did have some um, blackboard spray which I used on cardstock to give me a really matte uh, black finish and then I've been using my distress paints to create uh, as best I could a chalkboard look and uh, I definitely carried on the leaf theme. So it's all about taking bits and pieces from what Tim has done, trying out the techniques and seeing what you can come up with. 
then last but not least, <laughs> actually it wasn't last for me, it was second to last for me, is the December tag. And uh, I do love a little bit of Christmas. And this technique showed us how to use some of Wendy Vecchi's Clearly for Art and some frosted film. Both new things to me and both things uh, that I actually had, which was a bit different to November. And Tim created this gorgeous poinsettia which just has a lovely translucent frosty feel I really did like this but I didn't have the dye so I couldn't do a poinsettia and I decided that the frosty look would be great for snowflakes and I had a little bit of problem with my dyes because they just weren't didn't have that oomph to get through this material but I got there with a little help from my scissors and I definitely would uh, recommend using a, a slightly chunkier dye. The big dyes, I think, would be a better uh, thing to use to cut this product. Um, but it turns out lovely with the frosted finish. It is an, a really nice effect, and I did enjoy it. And I combined it with a little look that I'd done on an art journal page to do my final and uh, very Christmassy tag for December. So there you have it. Oh, what fun I had looking at this little lot of tags all stored neatly away. This will be something that I can keep on my desk now and uh, I will use it throughout the year just to give me some more inspiration uh, when the need arises. And uh, I do like uh, to put some of my tags on the end so that I can see some of the hard work and some of the creativity that I've enjoyed throughout this year. So I do want to say a great big thank you to Tim, to Mario and to everyone at uh, Ranger for all the products and all the inspiration. I really love this challenge. I'd recommend it to anyone, whether you're a beginner or someone like me who has been playing with craft stuff for quite a long time now. Um, it really is a fun way to get yourself sat down and to get your creativity and your thinking cap on and create something, a little mini work of art. And I do know that any minute now, Tim will be posting his January tag for a whole new set of tags in 2014. And I don't think I'm even going to bother saying I can't afford the time because it's just too much fun not to. So I'm looking forward to seeing new techniques and uh, new products and playing along with 12 tags of 2014. But for now, this is my 12 tags of 2013. And any time that I want a little bit of inspiration, it's right here at my fingertips. And as I mentioned earlier, me and my friend Deb and quite a lot of other excited crafters got to see Mr Holtz himself in the UK and we took a workshop where we made this fun tag book. Now mine still isn't quite finished, I have to confess, but I'm getting there. I've got some of my um, photos in, I've done all my stamping, I'm gradually attaching all sorts of bits and pieces of um, ephemera and this is uh, Admit One sticker that was perfect for uh, this event. It's me and my little pinny, which I have to say is still pristine. I haven't got any paint on it yet. <laughs> and I'm gradually adding little bits and pieces that I collected, uh, the photographs that we took, and I'm gradually putting this together and it will be a great memento of a lovely workshop. And it was really, really great fun to meet all the other um, fans of tags and getting messy and grungy and inky and uh, obviously meeting the man that uh, we've been playing along with for the past couple of years. And you can see in the background of these pages that we did get to play with a lot of the new stencils and uh, I have to say thank you to my mum who bought me some stencils and put them in my Christmas stocking this year so I will be playing with those when, when we play along with the new tags this year. So not only did I make 12 tags this year, but I also made 12 videos to go with them. So on this little review uh, in photograph form, I'm going to put all the links to each of the videos for each of the tags. So you can see how I got from Tim's inspiration to my interpretation. And I hope that I give you a few um, tips of my own on these videos. And uh, uh, the actual linking thing is a little skill that I learned myself this year. And... I think when I look back at the videos that I've been making, I'm hoping that I get a little bit more professional with each video that I bring. And I really do hope that you like them. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I love to hear your comments. And uh, if there's something that you perhaps want to, me to tackle and try and show you, then feel free to leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. So as I leave 2013 behind and look 
forward to seeing what 2014 brings. I just thought I'd show you a shot of my tag inspiration wall and you can see I do love a tag. And uh, the second row up is the tags from 2012 and all the rest are tags that I've made as part of the Tag Tuesday challenge. I played along quite a lot at the beginning of the year but I haven't managed to keep up um, throughout 2013. But if you like tags then I definitely recommend that you pop along. At the beginning of the year I made a Zentangle alphabet and that prompted me to design this little tag storage unit. So that's one of the uh, workshops that I sell in my um, Etsy shop. If you didn't know, I do make uh, workshops, online workshops, and I do sell them for these larger projects. So if you're interested and want to store your tags, then please feel free to follow this link and pop along to see uh, what I've got over in my Etsy shop. So until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this tag review and I look forward to playing along in 2014. So if you like tags, don't forget to join in and thank you for watching.